for another vlog that's right uh, this is the opening segment of the BTS vlog that will take us from January 31st to February 3rd that's right we were in the middle of uh, Chinese Lunar New Year so Kang Hei Fat Choi because after all I am in an Asian neighborhood and I myself am West Asian yeah that's right if you don't know the uh, Asia is a pretty large area there's East Asia, which is primarily the Chinese area. Then you have uh, uh, so, uh, uh, Central South Asia, that's primarily India. And then West Asia is the Middle East all the way up to Greece. So Greece, in terms of the, the, the uh, eastern part of Greece, uh, that's your uh, northwestern south of uh, Asia. And, and as you go for the south to the... Uh, to the southwest side, that's primarily the Middle East. That includes uh, uh, Iran, Iraq, uh, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, uh, Palestine. These are all part of the uh, Asiatic uh, sphere. Anyways, uh, let me give you the date and time stamp, or should sure, the time and date stamp. It is 22 hours and 15 minutes into the day of February. Uh, of, of, not February, <laughs> uh, let's do this again, it is 22 hours and 15 minutes into the day of Friday, January 31st, 2014, yeah, February is gonna occur in a couple hours, that's what I was thinking and it popped up into my mind, anyways, um, uh, what's going on is that, uh, I'm adjusting to a new work schedule, and that is the try. Uh, things have gone in, in in a variety of segments as we've sort of expanded. We initially started off with Big Bang Theory or out. Then, if you watch the the episodes all the way up to now, you'll see at some point in time last summer I began working on the concept of bringing out uh, Cyborg Alpha TV and uh, Physics TV. Did that over the summer. Got that working. And basically, sometime in November, October, November, we got the channel working. But primarily, it was the BTS vlogs. It was that, and, and I was really struggling to get the work done on anything else. I mean, the other episodes were trying to were coming out, but they were sporadic. Now the goal is to bring in more content, more episodes, more more um, web series. In other words. We want to, uh, what I want to do is I want to develop the channel more fully. In other words, the channel's not simply going to be BTS Vlog. It's not going to be, be um, Big Bang Theory. It's not going to be uh, one thing or the other. It's going to be uh, Big Bang Theory RL. That's going to contain BTS Vlogs and Insta Vlogs. Those are basically the two types of vlogging shows. It's going to contain, contain Beauty and the Geek. It's going to contain um, Ubuntu Beast, the Unix of Town. Hopefully, we should be able to, as well, in 2014, bring out the kitchen diner. Finally get that off the, off the ground. Uh, and let's see if we could do, you know, bring out that content uh, the way I intend to, the way I want to. And that's going to mean a real, real reshuffling of the schedule because the content, the, the television production, and all the content it's supposed to produce or has to produce is in addition to the research that's going on here and a lot of the research needs to feed into it so that's where the challenge is going to be now the challenge is to go is to go beyond the sing, the simple BTS vlogs that I have been doing into something more comprehensive 
And this means uh, really readjusting my schedule so that everything starts working together with the filming desk, with the uh, editing desk, with the uh, uploading. All these things have to be sort of worked into a schedule that they work together. And that's one of the reasons why you see uh, um, I have the, the uh, washing machine behind me. Well, not only is it going to be part of the clothing design uh, that I'm working on for uh, Beauty and the Geek, uh, but it's also going to, it also makes, um, instead of me having to go out and do laundry, which I did, it now means I can integrate the laundry better into my time, into my schedule as I need to do it. And in addition to have several other uh, uh, engineering work as well, uh, because I know how to do engineering work, I know how to redesign things, uh, this gives me uh, a chance to do some more engineering work to see how, if there's a problem fitting things in or, or a problem doesn't arise, how do I repair it? How do I deal with it? In other words, it gives me an engineering challenge beyond uh, simply having the, um, the washing machine there. And I'll show you probably in the next segment that I did get the, um, the music set up here. This is for a whole music set up here. There's a, a, the, a piano here. There's two sound boards. And I'll show you how everything's going to work together. And hopefully this will sort of get me into... Uh, uh, this is sort of on the lines of the BT... Uh, with, the, uh, with the bass vlogs. But also going to bring, bring something I'm going to bring into uh, the BTS vlogs as well. Um, to do a... Uh, I've done a historical study of music. Gone into the archaeology, gone into the anthropology of music. Now I want to take it beyond and actually start you know, going back to uh, when I had uh, taken uh, music, particularly classical guitar, uh, when I was in, in uh, junior high, and start bringing my musical, my music talent forward to the, to the point where I can test out and hear different. Um, uh, Different ideas in music, different ev evolutions of music, uh, how music evolved, what might be related to something else, you know, how music inter interrelates between different cultures. Uh, this is kind of what I want to get into the music research. It does extend into uh, the bass log because it, it does uh, involve archaeology and anthropology. Music, for, uh, if you don't really necessarily understand this, is oral tradition. Oral tradition is history. In other words, there's two forms of history. There's written history, and then there's oral history. Written history we know of. Oral history has been more or less ignored and not really considered as part of history. But it should be. It should be considered as much part of history as written history itself. Uh, and so this is where the music... Uh, connects us to the computer, as computer science, but it also connects us to uh, engineering, electronics engineering, uh, history, archaeology, anthropology, music, uh, and a whole host of other areas that interconnect, and include, in, in including, just, just remember now, acoustical physics. There's a physics involved here with, with acoustics that can be experimented with. So all these things are going to be looked at. Anyways, I will talk more about this in the next segment. See you then. All right. Take it, be take it easy. Well, the weekend's over, and what happened? The battery died over um, on the uh, mobile uh, uh, the, on the mobile uh, system. The uh, cyborg out from you. Uh, the battery died on the camera, so there was no vlogging over the weekend. So that means uh, we're going to have to do a catch-up now. So let's give you the uh, time and date stamp. It is 22 hours and 5 minutes into the day of Monday, February 3rd, 2014. That's right, and this is only the second segment for uh, uh, the BTS vlog covering uh, January 31st to the 3rd. As I said before, when the battery dies, you got no uh, option but uh, but to sort of uh, skip the vlogging, and so that means uh, we have to. Uh, I have to uh, sort of catch you up on Saturday and Sunday. Oh, well, how should I say this? Saturday's only work well. I was surprised at the amount of work I could get done on the mobile office with Cyborg Alpha Mu. 
Cyborg Golf Review performed very well. I was able to get enough of the production notes done for uh, the next episode of Beauty and the Geek, which means that uh, as of uh, tonight, sometime tonight, uh, I'll be finishing up the uh, the uh, the production notes and start some of the setup, the graphic setup um, for uh, Beauty and the Beauty and the Geek. In other words. I'm rearranging, and this is what happens. Each week you do a production or successfully move up your production schedule. Uh, you're always learning something new. You're always learning how to do something better. And this is sort of what's happening here is that things went well last week. But now this week you have to do better. Did I do everything I wanted to do last week? No. But did it did it do better than the week before that? Before that? And the answer is yes. So although we did better didn't achieve what we wanted. So that means this week we're going to have to work a little extra harder, a little extra, a little extra hard, and to sort of uh, resolve some of the issues that popped up last week that prevented us from getting all the work done. Uh, at the same time, I've got to, uh, as I said before, i got to start working on a way to uh, look at my health, to pay attention to my health, because if you're going to be running on the edge or close to the edge as possible, then you got to realize that this is going to tax the body. And so you've got to find a way to resolve the problems that will occur by running on the edge. And this is sort of what I started to do over the weekend. Because the weekend is where I get the least amount of sleep. Usually Saturday and Sunday morph into one day. And I usually get between Saturday and Sunday, I get one hour worth of sleep. That meant that on Sunday night and Monday, I've now scheduled off until later on in the evening, until like just about now. I schedule off and don't do anything except except for sleep. I can do something known as a sleep vacation. If you're in a sleep deficit more often than not, one of the things you need to do is you need to set aside vacation time simply to sleep, not to sleep vacation. And that's what I've done is I've set aside uh, one day, basically Monday. Uh, to do nothing but sleep. And that usually gets me to a point where I am I am I'm able to begin the week again. So basically the week ends Sunday afternoon is around 3 4. I go to bed and the day starts again usually on Monday between 4 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So that gives me just about 24 hours to sleep. And that should be enough to sort of get me back into a good work mode again without being too hard on the boss, of, on the body itself. So, uh, but we'll see what the side effects are. We'll see how it does affect my body. I'm also going to be start, starting to arrange, rearrange my diet so that my diet can produce uh, more energy uh, than I used to and also deal with some of the issues in terms of uh, that would necessarily be caused by the sleep deprivation. Uh, what else is there? Huh. Uh, I will try to on the weekend start vlogging in church but the problem is is that when you vlog in public not everyone's sort of keen on that so I will try next week to introduce the camera and see what I can do what, what vlogging I can get done. Um, how that ends up working, but, but but how it ends up working out, but you know things are going well. I'm doing better with my Greek. I have new Greek Greek options here now for for the rest of this week. I'm going to try out. Uh, the other thing is is I'm going to be working uh, this week to uh, change to move from Cyborg Alpha TV to Cyborg Alpha TV Network. That means I'm going to be creating a network out of Cyborg Alpha TV. And hopefully growing it. In other words, I want to make this more of a successful venture. Start working on uh, on a more serious note. Serious note. And that means bringing in other re my other research channels. I have other research channels that I'm trying to put out stuff out to, and that will be rolled into the Insta vlogs. And so what has to happen now is I have to go for my my preliminary notes, which are basically BTS vlogs. BTS vlogs becomes my preliminary notes, or what I call ad hoc notes. These are notes that are not particularly organized, just as they come up, as I think of them, so they're just simply jotted down in um, 
in, in no particular order and no particular organization. Uh, the Insta vlogs are the organization. It's the notebooks. It's the it's a notebook that I have that organizes the ad hoc notes into particular uh, sections and subsections, uh, headings and subheadings. And so that's what you're going to be seeing over the next few weeks. Basically, for the next year or so, we're going to be week by week trying to bring out, trying to get closer and closer to bring out the research that I'm doing here. You'll see this right now going on to a countdown uh, to bring uh, network, t uh, network TV uh, onto uh, YouTube to bring it out into its full form. And then uh, we'll work on the next project from there after we were uh, after uh, Cyborg Girl, Cy Cyborg Alpha TV Network. The next project would be to go uh, bring that whole thing from video on demand to live. So I think uh, the, our project goal will be um, Cyborg Alpha TV Network be completed by the summer and to begin in the summer working on Cyborg Alpha TV Live. And uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll, you know, we'll see how everything works out. Anyways, uh, that's it for now. I think I will come back in less than a half hour, 45 minutes, and do something on uh, the OR vlog. Uh, and this is notes that I've uh, found from the internet. Someone sent me something on uh, making a tornado in a jar or in, in a in a, uh, in a science hall. And I'll have a little bit more to say on that in the next segment. All right. Take it easy. Well, welcome back. This is our third segment of the BTS vlog. It is a little late. Uh, we are running over time once again. And you'll understand this in a few seconds as I give you the uh, time and date stamp. It is 14 minutes, that's right, 14 minutes into the day of Tuesday, February 4th, 2014. And that means that we've gone over our time for the... <laughs> we've gone over our time for the um, end of the February 3rd vlog and we're now on to February 4th. And what it means by 15 minutes into f uh, February 4th, for those of you who don't understand, because we're on a 24-hour clock, that means zero hours in 15 minutes. That's basically midnight. It's 15 minutes past midnight uh, on uh, February 4th. And uh, one of the things that we're going to talk about now is going to do a comment on a video that I got from uh, someone. Someone post sent me a, a, a post. Uh on uh, Google Plus, her name was Vanessa Fox. That's the uh, name on the account, anyways. Uh, although I went to the account and I don't see anyone here by the name of it. <laughs> it sort of seems to be an empty account, the Vanessa Fox account. But uh, she's a nice, seems like a pretty girl with uh, you know, I think uh, green eyes, uh, brown hair, green eyes. And uh, it led me to another video uh, by uh, this person named Vicky. And it was this, well, what if you can make our eight, eight, make a tornado? And it's basically um, a video of a tornado in a science center. And I've seen these uh, before, even the uh, tornadoes in a bottle, uh, where you could make your oh, these science experiments where you, they say you can make your own tornado. But the thing is, they're kind of making making uh, making a little bit of a mistake here. And this is they're not actually creating their tornado. What they're ma what they're actually making is something known as a vortex, and yes, vortex. You can create a vortex anywhere. With, you can actually create a vortex with a vacuum cleaner. But the thing is, is that it is more difficult to create a tornado. And I think a tornado is a vortex, but it's not created by a, 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 a what we call conventional means. It's not con con created by means that we can predict or have any degree of control over. Uh, then this is the problem with tornadoes. The reason why tornadoes are still fairly deadly is that uh, you can produce a huge cloud, but not all the clouds are going to produce tornadoes. In other words, the vortex, the vortices, vortex is one tornado. That's, that's the, th the, if you um, uh, fill up your sink, give me an example of how to, how to create a tornado, understand the vortex and vortices, fill up your sink, right? Plug your sink up, Fill up the sink with water, and then unplug the sink. If your drain runs fast enough, and the water drains up far enough, 
you'll see this cone develop right over the plug. There, there will be a cone here that will develop, and maybe I'll put up, if I can find, I'll put a picture of it of, of something like this that you can do. And that going down the drain action, the, the the swirling around the drain, that's a vortice. That's a vortex. I should say, if you have more than one, that's a vortice, right? The vortices is more than one. Vortex is one, uh, one of these uh, things. But imagine instead of having that vortex like that, you have the ver vortex inverted turned upside down, where the suction part sucking up everything and pulling it towards the drain is on the bottom and the drain is on the top. In other words, you reverse gravity. Well, this is what a tornado is. A tornado is a, a phenomenon because we don't know exactly how the tornado actually forms. We just know that it does form. Uh, and part of the research that's going on that, that I do, and this is part of the Ore Institute, the o Oceanographic and Oceanographic Atmospheric uh, Research Institute uh, is that we're looking at uh, how these uh, vortices, many tornadoes, form out of these clouds, these no, known as uh, 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 super, uh, uh, they basically look like an, we'll call an anvil head cloud, but, they, the, but the anvil head cloud is actually a, a a uh, misunderstanding again. It looks like an anvil head because it's very big and there's a huge, it's a very big, very tall cloud, very high cloud. It's really dark on the bottom, but at top you have this wide edge that comes hanging over. So that's why it's called an anvil head. It looks like an anvil. For those of you who know what an anvil looks like, uh, but it's is is basically if you see a very dark cloud that's hanging very low. And it's very long, and wide. That's that's a, those are the clouds that will typically produce tornadoes. Uh, and the thing is, it's that darkness on the inside that causes uh, the conditions in there create the conditions that the vortices will form. But where the vortices, the vortex, the vortices will form, or where a, vert, uh, a vortex will, will form, is not necessarily known. Uh, they can't predict where. A particular tornado is going to form, or when it's going to form. They just know that the cloud, or this particular type of cloud, and this type of system, uh, produces these types of uh, weather phenomena. And so there is still the ongoing search to understand what's going on inside the thunder cloud, inside that particular cloud, that creates this, uh, this, uh, 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 these. Vortices, the, the, these vortices, uh, these events that occur on the ground that, that we call tornadoes. So there is still a, a, a lot of, uh, of stuff that's not known, and this is kind of what drives research. Research is about going into the unknown, it's about trying to figure out what you don't know and filling in these holes. And that's no exception here. So yeah, take the idea that the uh, vortex, which you see in um, in the science centers and what you can do for the science science fairs, that's a good example of the vortex. That's the structure that forms that creates the tornado. But this is not how the tornado actually forms. How the tornado actually forms is unknown still. And the, if you're interested in science, this is a good thing because who knows? Maybe you could figure out and discover why the tornado forms the way it does. What creates a, a thundercloud that makes this this uh, tornado? This is a question that's out there that's unknown. And uh, you could be the first to do that. That's kind of, uh, if you will, the, the prize. And the prize actually is the uh, is the is the understanding of the research itself. It's not necessarily uh, any monetary value you get out of, or, uh, or you know, awards or anything like, or anything like that. It's basically the understanding. That's what drives you forward. Anyways, we're at the end of the, the this third segment here. We still have one more segment left to go. Uh, let me see if I can figure anything to come out and talk about uh, again. Uh, but uh, yeah, see you in the next segment. Well, we are finally at the last segment of uh, this BTS log for uh, January 31st to February 3rd. And of course, because it's 3 o'clock in the morning, we've gone over to February 4th, a little bit over time, but still on an up note. So let me give you the time and date. 
uh, our time and date stamp, right? Because it's a vlog, and every vlog needs a time and date stamp. Because it's not a log if it's not a if it's without a time and date stamp. Mm -hmm. All right, it's three hours and three minutes into the day of Tuesday, February fourth, two thousand fourteen. That's right. And uh, we're talking earlier about uh, getting. Uh, Getting the week off to a better start than last week in order to get more work done, and this is actually happening uh, up to a, up to a good start. I'm off to a good start. It looks like because of the way Cyborg Alpha Mu uh, worked over the weekend that uh, I was able to get enough work done while I was on Cyborg Alpha Mu. That was means I was out of my office and on the mobile office. Uh, I was able to do enough on Cyborg Alpha Mu that. Uh, uh, the uh, week on today starts off on a flying start. So we ha I had my sleep vacation. I had my... Um, oh, excuse me. My rest. And it's time to uh, get the week started, more or less. Anyways, um, what I didn't have said before, that, that we're bringing in uh, the ad hoc notes into, into BTS Logs. The ad hoc notes, which are... The unorganized notes for the Insta vlogs are now going to come into BTS Log as we start getting uh, the ready for uh, Cyborg Alpha TV network. In other words, we're going from the TV channel to the network, bringing in a lot of the different research institutes that I have out there, bringing all the different components and pieces together. So this uh, particular uh, ad hoc note that I'm talking about now is for the, the uh, for the Bass vlog. The Bass vlog is the Byzantine and Antiquity Studies uh, vlog. It's for the Byzantine and Antiquity Studies Institute. And this whole goal of this institute here, the whole purpose of the institute, is to take a look at archaeology and history. And more particularly looking at archaeology and anthropology. And I say, as I said, one of the ways of doing this is looking at the Greek language, particularly in ancient Greek, uh, but not from an academic point of view. And one of the reasons I say not from an academic point of view is I find a lot of academic uh, institutions to be highly ignorant. Now you may say, oh, how can you say academic institutions are ignorant? Simple. Because when an academic, and most academics get an idea in their mind, they become so focused on this idea and the correctness of this idea that they can't see anything else. And this has been proven with Einstein. Einstein did his work uh, not recognized by the university as a patent clerk. It wasn't until afterwards that the, the, the academic community recognized that Einstein was, rotten, was right and brought him in. In other words, a lot of the discoveries, a lot of the outside-the-box thinking does not occur within the academics, and with what they call the academic rigor. The academic rigor is the academic standards, the, scholar, the scholarly standards, in many cases are so ignorant. And ignorance is not being stupid. Ignorance is the things you don't want to know. Like, let's say you've developed a theory. And all of a sudden you find out your theory is incorrect. You find evidence to show that your theory is incorrect. More often than not, if you're an academic, you're going to deny this exist the existence of this theory. You're going to hide it. You're going to push it away and insist that your theory is correct, even though you've seen the truth. And this is where you become ignorant. This is where you, because you don't want to see what's going on. You don't want to see these develop. You don't want to see the challenges to your own particular theory. Particularly if you've, get, if you've gotten into a position of esteem or you're in a position of tenure. Your, your tenure does not, you don't want your tenure to be, uh, uh, to be challenged. You don't want your esteem to be challenged. And even, this is even true of universities. Universities do not want their, their academic standings challenged. But, if, if you're to be truly open, to truly, uh, you know, looking towards knowledge, then you have to question yourself. You have to constantly push your boundaries. And this does not occur within the academic circles. Pushing your boundaries, if you're in, in an academic, does not actually occur. And what ends up happening, and this is what I'll be looking at with the uh, BBC's Open University, and there's a variety of series that are coming up, uh, but I've been watching on PBS... And then want, then follow it on on um, on BBC as well. Uh, that really demonstrates this whole concept of academic academic ignorance, where they've gone to the point now where they're creating modern mythology. They'll go and dismiss things in history that they shouldn't have dismissed. 
without properly understanding what's actually occurred in history, they'll go and dismiss it as mythology. In other words, there's important there's important detail that you need to know in order to start, un understand how something developed. What they'll do is they'll go in and say this particular detail that they feel is insignificant or contradicts their particular theory. They'll say, oh, don't worry about it. It's mythology. It, that's, just, that, that, that's just the mythology of the time. But that dismisses things. And if it, it, that dismisses things. That if you look at it carefully, you go ahead and ask the question, well, why are they dismissing? Why isn't this thing important? And ask yourself that question. Why isn't this important? Why do they say this is not important? And you'll find out. It's not important because it contradicts their theories. It contradicts what they're saying. It contradicts their beliefs. And all of a sudden, their beliefs, their research that they've been working on, if you bring in this part here, in the, the, the part that they consider to be mythology, what ends up happening? The whole underlying theory, the whole pretest, the esteem that they bring to their own standings. In other words, they're creating their own esteem. They're creating self-esteem. They're creating narcissism. And this challenge to their narcissism, this part that they want to see, want you to see as mythology, is why they want you to see as mythology. They don't want their, they don't want their esteem challenge. They don't want their narcissism. System challenge. They don't want their identity challenged. And this is one of the things I'll be showing in. Uh, there's two uh, series out there. One is on the uh, British monarchy, and the other one is on uh, divine women. And this is not a trashing women, but the thing is, what happens is that there is a lot of misunderstanding in, in history. And I'll give an example of this. There, in this show, she praises a lot of the. Uh, of, of the Indian cults, the Indian uh, Hinduism, the, the deities, where they center around gods that are primarily female. Give an example, the goddess Kali. Well, if, and so she praises, oh yeah, there's a goddess of Kali that, you know, women have a high stature here. Go study Kali, go look at India, look at the delete system, look at the, uh, the, 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 the ceremony called Sati, where they burn the wife alive on the, on, on the funeral pyre of the husband. That's what the cult of Kali. When you see the reality as opposed to their own uh, romantic ideas, their own romantic fantasies as how they see these cults, the reality of what you see on the ground does not meet their fantasy. And that's what it is, fantasy. But they're telling you this fantasy is real, that it's academic, that it's scholarly, and therefore you should believe them. Anyways, our time is up. I'll talk to you in our next segment, on our next BTS vlog. See you later. Democratic Earth. Earth.